Well, today on Nation, a window cleaning podcast, we're talking all about the ways that I failed. Even if you're not in business, it's always fun to hear how somebody else messes up. But if you are, let's talk about my failures today on WCR Nation. What's up, everybody? Jersey here from windowcleaner.com, and you are here. What's up? If it's your first time here, have a look around. Hopefully, you enjoy it. Hopefully, you get a chance to learn from my mistakes today, because we're talking all about failures. Uh, But more importantly, there's five years of content. So if you're just finding the podcast, absolutely amazing. High five. Say what's up to you. Uh, Go back. There are hundreds and hundreds of episodes and hundreds of hours of content. So go back. Watch them. Uh, Some of them are halfway okay, might I say so myself. Uh, But if you are one of the OGs, if you are one of the OWCs, the original window cleaners, or the cool kids, what's up? It is because of all of you, the people who watch every episode, the people who put your orders in through me, the people who uh, have a subscription to the magazine and everything else that's out there. It is because of you guys out there that I get to do this. So thank you in advance to everybody who watches, listens, downloads, comments, thumbs up, all that good stuff. And shameless plug of the week, I am a sales rep for windowcleaner.com. That's what I do. That's why I do these things so I can meet more of you and have more of you try me as a rep. And I hope I could be absolutely amazing for you as a rep. But if you have an order you want to put in, all you need to do is just put everything in your cart, or you can even let me know. But shoot me a text, 862-312-2026. That is my cell. Just text me, be like, yo, Jersey, it's in my cart. All I do, verify your address so I don't send it to the wrong place, and put the order in. It's just that simple. And I get credit for it, and it costs you nothing. It costs you not a, a penny more to do that. Big orders, little orders, all of the orders make sense to me. And on a second note, if you haven't gotten your subscription yet to American Window Cleaner Magazine, are you even a window cleaner, bro? Uh, go to awcmag.com and get a subscription to the only and longest running window cleaning magazine in history. The magazine has started in 1986 and it's gone through some changes and it is now a monthly magazine with pictures and articles and posters and of course the amazing sticker sheet with uh, custom window cleaning stickers that I make every single month. (laughs) Uh, By the way, if you ever have ideas for stickers or content, let me know. It's, uh, It's always very hard to come up with. The sticker sheets are amazing. Uh, We're also launching, if you're listening right now, don't spill the beans, but we're launching a new club. So we have the sticker club now. So if you just want stickers, we can go in and for a couple bucks a month, we send you sticker sheets every month they come out. But we are starting uh, as of the first of the year, the Ultimate Swag Club. And it is a shirt of the month and it is a three pack of stickers and it is a monthly subscription, and it's going to be like 39 bucks. You get a window cleaning shirt, custom made. You get uh, three sticker pack. Anyway, go to awcmag.com, uh, subscribe to that, and if uh, that club sounds awesome to you, text me and let me know that it is going to be a smart decision for us, but we're still getting everything in, in play. Anyway, okay, side note, everything's over. Uh, shameless plugs done to some degree. Um, But you guys know, most of you, that I have been a window cleaner for a very long time. I had a window cleaning business for like 16 years. Um, I was was, um, successful to some degree, I guess you'd call it. Not to be, I'm just a guy with a camera. Don't, Don't take this as a as a flex, but, uh, and then I did sell my company. So these are the horror stories that came from that time because I find failure interesting. I find failure very interesting when it comes to decisions people make. And I also find it very interesting that every person, including myself, thinks that they know best. And it's kind of true, right? You know best and everything that you do is what you think is right because otherwise you wouldn't do it. 
right? So everything that you're doing is in your head the best thing you could be doing. But sometimes we talk ourselves out of what actually makes sense. Sometimes we tell ourselves that something something's going to work when everybody around us is telling us it's not. And sometimes those are big wins. Other times, we don't really think things through. Or, more importantly, the execution could be done differently. And that's what a lot of these are. I'm going to go over five failure stories uh, that are really big. Hundreds of thousands of dollars lost um, because of these. But learn from my mistakes. Hopefully you're not doing these, but hopefully you understand where I'm coming from on these. And I'm going to start it all off with one of the coolest ventures that I ever thought I ever stumbled upon. And it was, I was going to do gift certificates for window cleaning at a mall kiosk. Now, this is 15 years ago or whatever, maybe not that long ago, 10 years ago, we'll say. Maybe longer than that. Anyway, a long time ago. And it was when malls were a thing, first off. And second off, I had this great idea. I'm in Wisconsin, so my company slows down. Man, I wish people could almost like prepay for service. I'm thinking like, oh man, what if we did a kiosk in the mall and we sold gift certificates to window cleaning? Okay. Let me let me let me put this in your head. You tell me if it's a good idea. But everybody has somebody they they don't know um, what to buy them. Everybody has somebody that's super hard to buy for. Everybody has somebody who they got everything. They're the people who have everything, right? What do you get somebody? Well, no one has a gift certificate to window cleaning. Everybody has windows. If you have a house, your mother or grandma or Anybody that you just don't know what to get, you could get a gift certificate to window cleaning, and that would be absolutely amazing. I still think this is one of the greatest ideas I've ever come up with. Gift certificates for window cleaning. Let me paint the picture. So we started off doing it for 45 days. We we did a lease, and it was a holiday lease. We had to get the holiday lease super early because the mall just sold out super fast. We had also done... Um, the mall itself that we were there. We did a bunch of stores inside. We actually did the mall itself, the common entrances yeah, for window cleaning. So I was talking to the owner and um, she said, yeah, you know, actually somebody had just dropped out like three days ago. We got a waiting list, but I haven't called anybody yet. And I kind of got it. I was like, oh, this is awesome. This is awesome, right? It started with me not understanding how long 45 days is. I signed a contractual obligation saying that we had to have the booth manned, without better terms, every hour the mall was open or we would be fined. Okay? Now, I've gotten fined three times in that time for going to the bathroom. The people who were running it ran to the bathroom and nobody was there. That's how absurd it is. Anyway, I thought, man, this is great. Pre-Black Friday, we'll hit Black Friday. And then all up to that, last minute shoppers are going to be big. So right around the holidays will be big. I thought, man, this is great. This is great. So I came up with a booth. It was one of those like rolly carts. So I didn't have a ton of room and I just kind of made pictures. And my pictures weren't as awesome. It wasn't an advertisement as much as it was an explanation. And... Unfortunately, the mall was so busy, there's 10 people on each side walking, and we're in the middle. And we didn't set aside enough space to have people come in and talk. So they kind of got lost in the crowd. We did have some people take some cards and things like that, pamphlets and whatnot. Um, And it could have translated out of that. But during that whole time... Uh, I thought it would be really great to also have hours for the guys, right? So if things started slowing down, they could get some hours before the end of the year. So we started off with uh, having our techs be the salespeople. Not a great idea. Because again, they were not salespeople. Uh, They could talk. But when you put it in a mall kiosk and no one's talking to you, you see the people that are on their phone. I know for a fact that they do not interact or engage with people. So the first week came off and I split it up and we've gotten a bunch of people, different shifts. And um, 
it didn't go real well. The first week we didn't have any sales. Well, that sucks because I paid for the mall booth. I paid for all the gift certificates and now I'm paying for quite a bit of labor uh, and not really getting anything out of it. Uh, it's, er it's early, it's early. Week two comes in, nothing again, nothing. Not one thing sold. Man, I'm stopping at a mall every day, talking to them, kind of seeing what they're doing, you know, what's the engagement. Mall still seems a little slow at the time. and Nothing. By week three, I could not pay another week's worth of uh, employment for somebody who's not providing me any type of income back. So I started doing it. Splitting it off, kind of still splitting with people. I was not getting anybody. I was talking to people, engagement. Uh, the first week that I did it myself, uh, the first day I did it myself, I sold one. I was like, see, this is the problem. I wasted, you know, weeks of having these other people, blah, 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 blah. Just to fast forward, the entire time I did this, I sold two or three gift certificates. That's it. Well, here's the other thing. Window cleaning itself costs. What's your average ticket? 300 bucks? That's not really a price for someone so we did open gift cards or gift certificates you could do any price you wanted you want to only spend 50 bucks great stocking stuffer right whatever but the translation was is that you had to spend more money or you would get somebody something that was a gift certificate towards something if you get somebody a gift certificate for food right well, i got you a starbucks card or a uh, lone star like you can get enough that would cover the meal and you don't feel like you're making them pay but i feel like a lot of people were like, well, yeah, how much does window cleaning cost? Is this for the whole windows? You can, but that's like 300 bucks. And they're like, oh, well, I don't want to buy that much, right? So first off, the translation didn't happen. My kiosk sucked. I didn't have anything to draw people in. There was nothing that was super amazing, right? I could have changed it by having a actual window set up and cleaning the window in the middle of the mall, just having people watch, right? I could have cleaned that all day long. I could have had somebody doing that when it was super, super busy while having somebody sell. I could have had a better salesperson. I could have had, um, you know, more uh, interactive kiosk, but I didn't. I didn't have any of that. Black Friday comes along, and I've sold at this point one gift certificate in the entire time. Black Friday came along, and it was 23 hours. I think the mall opened at 5 a.m., and it went through midnight. So what is that? A long time. 5 a.m. Was it 5 or 4? I don't remember. But it was like 20 hours. 20 hours that I stood at a kiosk and didn't make one sale. The mall was packed. Didn't make one sale. Well, now it's getting close to Christmas. It's just the time and time and time. I spent 45 days every single day of the week there. I accrued fines. I spent labor costs because I couldn't physically do it all myself. We lost on all the marketing material that we did buy. I lost everything in going into winter when we didn't have the cheddar to do it. I learned a valuable lesson is that execution was really big and that's how I failed on that. That loss probably cost me about twelve to $15,000 going into winter. Um, again, that's with probably um we did get some referral stuff later people said they saw us at the mall but very very few we just did not execute it well we'll say it's a fifteen thousand dollar loss the next failure that i did was a multi-location i opened a second branch to our company now great idea great area we did a bunch of work but it was an hour drive away it was a very very rich area I got a little office, which was relatively cheap, I mean, really relatively cheap. A little office space, I think, was like 350 bucks a month, something like that. And we had it all set up that the one of our head techs was going to run that location because he lived out in that area. It just would have worked. Literally the Friday before that location started on Monday, he told me he didn't want to do it. He just he didn't want to sell. He just wanted to clean. He wanted to run the other location. Didn't want to do it. Well, I was down to the wire. I couldn't really do anything. So I'm like, well, I'm just paying for the space. 
So we let it run, tried to get somebody in for that location that knew what they were doing, had people down there spend a day. Nothing was coming out of that location because nobody was going to that location with really good mindset. And then what we did pick up was a couple smaller jobs. We had to then drive that hour into that area to do those little route jobs where uh, if we would have hit the area hard, we could have filled it up, even if it was one person manning the desk there. But it all came down to, again, execution and planning. My planning was not on par. We ended up having a year lease, and the day that year was up, we got rid of that office. It never went anywhere. Every job that we did get, we just got, and that hour drive to the jobs, we did all that. And I pushed that location before I had all of my ducks in a row. Now, what are you going to learn out of that? is if you're looking to start a location yourself, understand that there are lots of costs with that and understand that you need to recoup those costs. That particular um, job was, uh, or area, with, we won't even say drive time. I ended up buying a Prius because I figured I'd be doing so much driving, uh, but we won't even call that loss. It was, it was not, it was just me wasting money for no reason. And it was all because it didn't plan. I put everything out there in my brain and I said, well, this is going to work. And I did not plan. I did not execute. I did not go over everything. Now, mind you, I have another location in another city uh, that when I bought, I had bought too, I don't even want to say too soon, but I bought that location and it was costing me way more money than I thought it was going to cost. I didn't do my research, but that location was still amazing. Uh, it was still awesome for the business. It was, it was awesome. It was great. But I didn't do the numbers right on that one either. That was the first one. So I should have learned, right? But we'll chalk that one up with the special fancy car for the other location in the office. You're talking eh, $35,000 for that one. Not really a loss. I ended up selling the car eventually. It was a brand new car. So I think I had it for maybe three years or something, something along those lines. Um, and uh, when I sold it, obviously I made some money back, so I didn't really lose all that, but that all came back down to not execution, but not planning right. I didn't plan that right, and in turn, I lost, and I had that thing looming over my head for one full year, 12 months every day. Man, I'm paying for this other office. We're not even doing anything there. I gotta get somebody over there. Well, now we're short-staffed here. We gotta, but it just was not planned enough. And sometimes when we think we planned or we think, oh, man, it's a great idea, all of a sudden we pull the trigger and it was too soon. That's what that was. I did not plan well enough on that one. One of the biggest things that I did as a failure that I've done dozens of times, and I know you've done it dozens of times, but this really, really, really helped me open my eyes to what I do now, right? I'm in sales. I'm a product specialist, right? I'm the sales manager, whatever you want to say. All of those things come down to equipment. And what I get to do now is I get to help people find, buy, and use the equipment that helps their business get bigger and better, right? But I was a cheap window cleaner for a very long time, many years. In fact, my first system is my third failure. I messed up twice with my first water fed system. The first thing I did was I had a job that was turning keys uh, days later. So this job we started on a Thursday. We were turning keys, meaning the property had to be completely done and everybody off by Monday they were getting the keys. So we were right down to the wire already. We had everything for this job. It was going to go great. But guess what? I bought a pole that I thought would be fine. I knew it was too small, but I thought it would be fine. And I could make it work somehow. I was like six feet short and I was over my head. You can't clean over your head on like a fourth floor. But I, of course, bought the wrong pole. I bought like a 30-foot pole. And I'm like, oh, this will be fine. And it was not. So now, if I was to rebuy the right thing, it would have not gotten to me anywhere close to enough time. And I bought the wrong pole. Now, this was before you could add sections on to poles the way they were. Now, if you mess up, 
you could technically buy another section, but it's not going to get to you right away. You're already supposed to start a job, right? I bought the wrong pole to save a couple bucks. I'm an idiot. I did that. We see that every single day. A lot of people who come to me will almost argue me sometimes when I'm like, oh, get this. Ah, no, I think it'll be fine. Okay, cool. We got a pole called an M9. The M9 comes free. It's a 21-foot pole. Most people are like, yeah, that's fine. I could do a third floor with that. No, you can't. Nah, nah, we'll see. I'll, I'll try it. Cool. And then they call and go, yeah, I'd like to add to this pole. You can't. It's hybrid. Oh, oh, gosh. Wish I would have known that. Yeah, we talked about that. You decided to buy the cheap thing. I've had that happen a thousand times. I know I'm guilty of that. First part of it, the pole was wrong. I couldn't do the job. I had to hand keys over. They had somebody else come and do it last minute, and I lost that job. That was a big job at the time for us. I mean, it was like five or six thousand dollars. But at the time, this is early on. I was like, man, this thing is huge. This is great. I lost it because I was cheap. Well, of course, I learned my lesson, right? Well, I didn't because that same system. I had also cheaped out in getting a DI only instead of an RO DI. I'm sitting right next to the brand new uh, uh, Zero Pure Revolution Max Plus. Like literally, my hands on it right now. It's amazing, by the way. Anyway, I bought a DI only tank. I'll just I'll do that for now. I'll buy a DI tank, and then you know because I'm just getting going. When I get really going, I'll buy more. I'll, I'll buy the other system. Well, that's not how it works, right? A DI only is not self-cleaning. It's just the resin takes up all of it. Well, I happen to be, this is now the second job, the first job um, that I was on. No, this was the first job with that one, but the second job that I was trying to use water fit. First job, pole was too short. Second job, I was uh, ended up actually being on a well. I didn't know it. It was across the street from the city water. Literally, the rest of it was city. This was a well. Well, I got this system. I'm doing the job, man. Everything's cool. Everything's cool. Towards the end, I'm like, it's kind of not, man, I'm doing something weird or wrong. Now, you have to learn it. It's still a piece of equipment, right? But I tested the water again. And uh, normally, in one job, you're not testing the water multiple times, but I tested the water again, and the numbers were crazy high. What the heck? Well, I bought a DI only tank because I'm cheap, tried to save some money. And that expended, meaning I used up all the resin in seven hours. I spent $181 in seven hours. That means that I spent a ton of money on this project. I could have subbed it out and made more money. And now when that was all done, I had to buy more resin because I needed to use this again at some point. So I learned real quick to buy the wrong equipment you're stuck with the wrong equipment and it does not work. Why not spend a couple bucks more at the time to get what you need? Now I got a pole that wasn't the right pole. I got a system that wasn't the right system. I have to like get rid of those and buy a new system. I spent so much more money by not buying the right stuff at the right time. Well, now as a product specialist, that's what I do. I get people in the right stuff so that doesn't happen, but still get pushback sometimes. But anyway, uh, that failure of mine only cost me about four or five thousand dollars it wasn't that bad but at the time the pole that i had bought was one of the first carbon composite poles it was super expensive but yeah probably when you figure in when i bought the right stuff putting it all together it probably was closer to like seven eight thousand dollars but that was a failure and i learned from it it took me a long time to start buying the right tools but uh, i learned from it I learned from it. The fourth failure that I did that really, really resonated with me was uh, I went into my uh, accountant who was a friend of the family. And um, she always would save my stuff to last uh, every year. This was like my third or fourth year in business. And it was a Thursday. <clears throat> this was the Thursday before the deadline, which was Monday. Same scenario, Thursday to Monday, not much time. And I go in there and go over the paperwork, sign everything. You know, up until this point, I didn't really pay anything. I paid like uh, maybe I didn't get a uh, um, a return the year before, and I spent maybe a couple hundred bucks. She goes, "Man, you guys, you did really good last year. Thank you. Yeah, I know. 
I didn't really put together that this is the accountant saying this. You shouldn't. That's not a good thing. But she goes, okay, here's all your paperwork, and here's the amount of money you owe by Monday. And it was thousands and thousands and thousands of dollars. Now, this, if you know anything about tax time, Wisconsin, tax time's April 15th, meaning you're coming out of winter and you don't have any money, right? You're waiting for spring to really kick in, and I got this money due, like, right away. Now, in hindsight, I could have taken the uh, penalty and... Um, paid interest and fees and all that, but I didn't. I didn't. I actually uh, ended up borrowing money from my grandpa at the time for a, a hot minute and uh, to pay all this because I needed to pay payroll and everything else. And it was, again, because I didn't plan. I didn't have a good accountant. I had some lady that like I knew. Well, all year long, I just dropped stuff off eventually, and then she did the stuff. Like I didn't have an accountant. Now, I have an accountant that I could talk to any and every day of the year to make sure that number happens again. See, when something like this happens, you got to learn. That mess up, I could have done things differently or deducted or whatever, cost me about $10,000 and within four days. But that's nothing compared to this one. This is my biggest failure of all. And it was complacency. I was complacent. Basically, basically, here's what happened. What happened was <laughs> I had a job at the time. Uh, it was a $100,000 job. It was $98,000 a year, just over that. Um, but we'll say a $100,000 job for the uh, realm. I had this job. It was great. We had um, three guys on site two times a week, every week for the year. Great money. Great job. Awesome. Repeat every single two weeks or every single uh, two days of the week it was great it was great after about a year and a half of me just going dude this is this is awesome in that time guess how many times i went there guess how many times i checked the work guess how many times i checked with the customers see if they were happy guess how many times that i made sure i was doing what i needed to do If your guess is zero, you're right. In my brain, if I didn't hear anything, it was great. Well, in that time towards the end, this was a fleet washing job, by the way, in the pressure washing side of things, somebody else had come in. Um, A random company had come in and said, hey, we just want to do a demo. Well, the drivers started complaining about the trucks that we were doing because we were only doing soap. They never wanted us to even have acid on the thing. They said, you can't even have it on your trucks for a two-step. If you know anything about fleet washing, two-stepping is the best way to kind of clean things off. So we just brush. But the truck drivers started complaining about a lot of that because um, we would clean, but because we're going fast through things, they weren't getting perfect because they were just brushing with soap. And all I could have done to save this contract is talk to the guy. And say, well, you know, the trucks are looking a little rough. And I would have brought this up because I know it's a better way to clean. But he said no. Well, the new company came in, did a two-step. They didn't even ask. They just did it. Trucks came out. Awesome. They put one of their trucks next to our trucks and dropped us instantly. Hey, we are no longer needing your service. Oh, my gosh, what happened? Well, these guys came in and uh, did a demo, and uh, their trucks just looked so much better. I, I, they probably used two-step. That was when we started, you said that, you know, we could not have acid on the property because it was a food industry truck. They said, yeah, no. I mean, we looked at the MSDS. It's fine. It's absolutely fine. Like, the way it is, the dilution is perfect. Like, oh, man, but we can do that. Do you want us to do that? He says, it's too late now. It's too late. We've had you this long. The trucks are getting worse and worse. It's just too late. We got this other guy. We already hired him. I lost the contract because I didn't follow up. I was complacent. I didn't think about how much effort I needed to put in to an existing customer. I know you're guilty of this. I know it. There's customers you have, awesome customers. They're like, hey, if they're not calling me, there's no problems. There could be. There could be problems. They could forget about you. The next guy comes in, they don't know you. There's no relationship built. They drop you. I lost a hundred thousand dollars a year. I had to terminate three people. I think it was just two, but I had to terminate two people 
because that one contract was a main reason we had those extra people. I lost a $100,000 contract because I didn't call them. I didn't follow up and I put zero effort into a job. That was 100% my fault. By the time I said, oh, let's save this, it was too late. Sometimes people do this in their marriage. Sometimes people take for granted their partner so much and so often that by the time the breaking point happens, it's done. Go to counseling, it's done. Go to this, it's done. You know what? It, it, it's, it's gone. It's not in me anymore. It's been going like this for so long. It's too late. It's too late. It's too late to apologize. Right? It's too late. And that's all the fault of complacency. It's the fault that you did not put the effort in. It's the fault that I didn't put the effort in. So by the way, if you're in a marriage, put some effort into it. I'm telling you. I'm not about marriage. But in jobs in general, I know you got big clients. I know you got people that you're not talking to or not putting the effort into, and I know you should be. Those are my failures. That one racks into $100,000. So you're talking maybe uh, $150,000, $170,000 worth of failures that you just learned. The best thing you can do by my sadness Right, that's why my hair is as thin as it is, I think, with all this, the wrinkles I have. And that's all because of my failures. Now, you get all the knowledge you ever want. It's all handed to you. It's all there. Ask the right questions. But the big thing is, is that if you hear it, it has to sink in and you have to implement it. Take what I'm saying. I'm just some guy. I'm no guru. But take what I'm saying and learn from my mistakes. Learn from my mistakes so you don't have the same mistakes. If somebody says, hey, I uh, tried to clean a window with this rusty razor and it scratched, you should go, oh, don't just go, oh, it sucks for you. Go, oh, I should never use a rusty razor. Right? Take my failures, why they were failures, use them and make them not your failures. Let them be my failures. Anyway, there you go. That's the show. If you're still watching, I really, really appreciate it. Let me be your rep. That's a shameless plug. I'm just coming out saying it. I want to put all your orders in. Let me do that. Just shoot me a text. 862-312-2026 is my cell phone. Call me. Text me. Jersey, it's in my cart. Let's do it. Uh, if you haven't yet, a big, big push for the end of the year for the magazine, the American Window Cleaner magazine. I would love, love if you guys could get a subscription. It's like 69 bucks for the whole year. 12 issues to your mailbox with sticker sheets, posters, everything else. It means the world to me if you did that. Go to awcmag.com. awcmag.com. American Window Cleaner Magazine. Get a subscription. Do it for me. Do it for you. Do it to be better than your competition, but either way, do it. And until next week, go out there and don't fail like I did, but more importantly, go out there and be epic.